Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. So with a lot of us less able to go out these days, and uh, we just had the Christmas season, a lot of people are ordering packages to be delivered to their home or having Christmas gifts sent to them by others. And one of the big common frustrations is porch pirates, people stealing packages off of people's porch. Now, a lot of people sent me this article back in December. I'm just going to have a look at it now. I'm not going to cover it in much detail. I'm just going to sort of talk about the main sort of description here, which is she put cat litter in an Amazon package and a porch pirate stole it 40 minutes later. And so this was somebody who says she's lost a dozen packages to porch pirates. And so engaged in a little bit of uh, self-help by essentially setting setting them up to steal the contents of her cat's litter box, which she was dumping in Amazon boxes. And apparently she did this and it took under 40 minutes for somebody to drive by, scoop up the package of, you know, cat litter and take it off to wherever they're going. So people asked, wait a minute, is this legal? Is this something we can do? And what are the limits to that? So I thought I'd do a little bit of a video talking about this, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the Christmas season has passed, uh, the porch pirate issue is not going away. It's a fairly common sort of problem, and it's one people want to do something about. So the first bit of law that really impacts this is in section 247 of the criminal code. We'll just jump over to that. And that indicates traps likely to cause bodily harm. So it specifies every person is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term of not more than five years or is guilty of an offense punishable on summary conviction who with intent to cause death or bodily harm to a person, whether ascertained or not, A, sets or places a trap, device, or other thing that is likely to cause death or bodily harm to a person, or B, being in occupation or possession of a place knowingly permits such a trap, device, or other thing to remain in that place. Now, keep in mind, the standard for bodily harm is fairly low here. Uh, it doesn't have to be something where you've, you know, chopped off an arm or anything like that. Uh, bodily harm can be things like, you know, breaking the skin and causing someone to bleed. Uh, pepper spray has been determined to be an example of bodily harm. So bodily harm is a low standard. Again, you can see here that this is a hybrid offense, which means that the Crown can choose to proceed either summarily or by indictment, and the maximum penalty here is for five years. Note also that you don't have to be the person who set the trap. All you have to do is know about it and permit it to remain there. So, for instance, you know, if your roommate sets a trap and you're aware of it and you go, eh, I'm just going to leave it there. You know, this is funny, I'll just leave it you can actually be convicted as well. So be aware of that. Now, if it actually causes bodily harm, the penalty or the maximum penalty goes up to 10 years if they proceed by indictment. So, and if it actually causes death, then the maximum penalty goes up to life in prison. There's also provisions for if this is an offense-related place. Now, what an offense-related place uh, typically means is this is sort of aimed at grow-ups. The reason why is that a lot of people who had grow-ups would also set traps in them, uh, either to prevent people from robbing the grow-up or to target law enforcement. So if there's a, and if it's an offense-related place, then even if it doesn't cause any harm, the maximum penalty goes up to 10 years. And if it does cause bodily harm, the maximum penalty goes up to 14 years. So... Setting these at, you know, any place where crime is going on is an even worse idea. Now, you might be saying, well, I'm not looking to cause bodily harm. You know, I'm just looking to set out cat poop. Cat poop isn't going to cause any bodily harm. Or uh, there's viral videos out there of people uh, setting glitter bombs. And glitter bombs that include, for instance, uh, you know, odorous sprays and that sort of thing. Now, I tried to reach out to uh, the guy behind those videos. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get a response, so I'm not including any clips there. Uh, you can find those if you want. Just search Glitter Bomb and you'll find it. But uh, this also raises other possibilities, and that includes the Section 4, Mischief. So this is Section 430 of the Criminal Code. 
everyone commits mischief who willfully a destroys or damages property b renders property dangerous useless inoperative or ineffective or obstructs interrupts or interferes with the lawful use enjoyment or operation of property or obstructs interrupts or interferes with any person in the lawful use enjoyment or operation of property so maximum penalty if the value exceeds five thousand dollars is 10 years if they proceed by indictment or otherwise maximum penalty is two years and there's some other provisions about uh, religious property and the like or war memorials uh, those don't really apply here so the question then becomes you know if you rig up some sort of package that's intentionally uh, you don't want to cause bodily harm but you do want to cause some damage where it opens up. Uh, for example, you know, spraying glitter could be considered a form of damage. Uh, if you, let's say you replace the, because the sort of model I'm thinking of that people uh, often link to includes sort of an odor spray. Um, that odor spray might make it difficult to occupy that property. Uh, similarly, you know, let's say you take out the odor spray and you replaced it with something that sprayed paint or ink or something along those lines. If you think about what would happen if, you know, a paint bomb went off in somebody's house, uh, it might not cause any bodily harm, but it might still damage their property. And it doesn't take much damage to somebody's house before you start going over that $5,000 sort of cutoff. Now, you might say, well, it's not my fault that they took it to their house. You know, it's not my fault that they opened it in their car. It's not my fault that they did any of these things. But you had to be aware if you're building this kind of trap that those are possibilities. And the fact that that person was committing a crime against you doesn't necessarily give you the full right to act against them in any sort of fashion. In fact, the courts often take a dim view of vigilantism. Now, they might take less of a dim view of it to be perfectly blunt. They might take less of a dim view of it where it's hilarious because courts do, um, and maybe they shouldn't, maybe they should or shouldn't, but judges are people too, and sometimes they do take uh, some assessment of, you know, a sense of humor. But don't rely on that because you could very well get yourself into, into some trouble there. So uh, the cat poop is unlikely to cause any real damage. It's probably, and I say probably because in law, it's very difficult to sort of narrow things down. It's probably a fairly safe bet. But when you get into more complicated things, you know, that have a potential to either hurt somebody, uh, I've seen some people suggest, you know, things like blank ammunition. Don't do that because blank ammunition has the possibility to injure or kill people in some circumstances. Uh, or paint or these kinds of things which have the potential to cause lots of property damage you could very well end up getting uh, charged or you know otherwise dinged so i don't recommend that as a course of action there is the possibility that you could could face charges um, and that's even though the porch pirates are not a terribly sympathetic group so um uh, that's, I guess, the discussion of that. I don't, uh, as much as it can be uh, sort of an entertaining idea to think of getting revenge in these fashions, it's not usually sort of a great plan. But the other one people ask me about is what about tracking devices? And tracking device is probably fine. You know, it's something that's on your porch. It's, uh, it's just intended to detect and apprehend. The problem with that is that uh, once you have that information, what are you going to do with it? You may provide that to law enforcement and see that they pursue it. And that's probably the right way to go. You know, law enforcement with that information, they may or may not be able to, to do more than they could otherwise. And certainly there's probably no issue if you're participating in a law enforcement bait uh, program because certain law enforcement organizations have set up programs where they intentionally leave bait packages and this is probably a good idea because overall it uh, it reduces the feeling of safety that these porch pirates might have you know that this is a safe offense where they know they can get away with it but uh, don't go confronting them because that's unlikely to go well and in fact, the likely outcomes of that are going to be ones that you don't like. Uh, in particular, 
you know, you're saying, oh, well, I'm going there to confront them because they stole a thing off my porch. But that thing may not be of value if it's just, you know, if all it is is the tracker. What that looks like to the court is often, well, um, I found out this guy was committing offenses and it really made me mad. And so I decided I was going to take it into my own hands and play vigilante and go lay a beating on this guy. You're not likely to enjoy the outcome of that. So overall, and I know people are going to say, you know, this is unfair. The law is protecting criminals. The law actually does provide some protection, both for people who are following the law and people who are not following the law. Just because somebody is breaking the law doesn't necessarily mean that it's sort of open season on them. Much as, you know, that may be unsatisfying. Uh, also, you know, it's... It's really frustrating for lots of us. You know, I've had packages vanish uh, from my own porch, but uh, probably the best approach is if you're ordering from certain sites, they'll often offer sort of chargebacks. The police also ask that uh, even if you're able to sort of recover the value through Amazon or whoever, uh, they'd like a report, even if they're not going to do anything most likely with it, uh, they can eventually track it back. And further, sometimes what happens is they'll find somebody. So they finally track somebody down and they find sort of, a, you know, a cave of treasures where this person has been stealing stuff for, since forever. It's actually really helpful to the police if they can, if they have those reports, because they may end up finding, for instance, an entire garage full of stolen property that's slowly being sold off and moved. And if the police can actually track some of this stuff back, and it may, means that they can lay charges. And that's much better from the police perspective. So it is still worth reporting it, even though you, you know, don't expect the police to get off and, you know, start a massive investigation. You know, they're probably not going to show up and start taking fingerprints or anything like that. Um, they may take any video footage that you have or the like, but... Anyway, so that's sort of a brief coverage of anti-porch pirate measures. Um, I hope that you found this to be useful or educational. Uh, I'll link to the article. It's, again, from December. It's a little old, but I'll link to it anyway so that you can have a look at the story yourself. I also want to thank my Patreon subscribers at the $50 level, D. Mo, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Canada's National Farms Association, and Kyle Martin. At the $20 level, Cameron Johnson, Kevin Fleet, and Dale Nesbitt, as well as a number of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Uh, thank you for watching. Please, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Uh, please also like this video. Please share it with your friends. Please subscribe to see more content. And uh, I hope this has armed you with knowledge.